So we're now going to go a little over an hour east to the infamous Salem, Massachusetts, the true Halloween capital of America, uh, where about 30 years before Littleton's Witch Scare was an even deadlier witch, uh, witch hunt that went down. Salem Village was a, shall we say, contentious town that often argued amongst themselves for a few years. Now, they'd been hoping to find a full-time minister, but the previous few had left the position after a few years. Finally, they found Reverend Paris, who, despite inheriting a sugarcane plantation in Barbados, wanted to begin a career in the ministry. Paris was a strict man who saw sin everywhere he looked. But even he was shocked to discover it was coming from his own home. One night in 1692, his daughter Elizabeth Paris, his niece Abigail Williams, and their friend was uh, spending the night. Who, who was spending the night? Anne Putnam began hearing fit. Uh, began ha sorry. Began having fits. They were described later by another minister as having fits worse than like an epileptic seizure. They did end up calling the doctor. Uh, it's believed the doctor was named William Griggs, who, upon finding no physical signs of any ailments, determined they must have been put under an evil hand, or in other words, witchcraft. Once the girls had calmed down, the reverend uh, questioned them about what or who they saw. The girls said they had been tormented by three specters. Uh, for those who don't know, specters are physical forms the devil could supposedly take, but only if the people he looked like gave him permission to use their image, because apparently Satan is very into copyright laws. The three accused were Sarah Good, although initially born into a moderately well-off family, was a destitute woman who was known by the locals to be unpleasant and argumentative. Sarah Osborne, who was married to an Irish indentured servant, and Tituba, Reverend Paris's house slave of either Central or South America. All three were questioned. Sarah Good and Sarah Osborne swore their innocence, but the most shocking testimony came from the Reverend slave herself. Tituba confessed to the crime of witchcraft. She claimed that both Sarahs had forced her to sign her name in the Devil's Book, with theirs and more names on the list that she could not read. Immediately accusations began to fly. Not even George Burroughs, who was one of the former ministers, was safe. He, Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and Sarah Osborne would all be executed for their presumed crimes, among many others. Another notable accusation was Giles Corey. He was an elderly uh, farm owner. Um, he and his wife Martha were actually arrested by Sheriff Corwin. Martha pled innocent, thinking surely people would come to their senses, but uh, alas, she was convicted and executed. Giles, knowing what was coming, refused to play along and would plead innocent uh, would neither plead innocent or guilty. Colonial law at the time stated he could not be tried until he pleaded one or the other, and if he did not make a plea, he must be forced to make a plea. How do they force him to do that? Well, what they did was uh, Sheriff Corwin had him pressed. This is where Giles Corey was laid on the ground, and they placed a wooden board, which was usually a door on top of him, but we don't know for sure if that was the uh, wooden board or not. Uh, regardless, once they placed the board on him, he, they then slowly, over the course of a few days, would place large boulders and rocks on top of the board, the idea being it would slowly crush him to death, although give him time to plead before he uh, would be killed by it. At some points, Sheriff Corwin would even jump onto the board to try and cause more pain and get him to plead. But whatever, whenever they asked him, how, does he, how do you plea, Giles would always respond in the same way and simply tell them, more weight. Friggin' legend. Eventually, after three days, and keep in mind, this is continuous, he wasn't given breaks, he was literally out, exposed to the elements for three days. 
constantly under the pain of the boulders being pressed on him. Uh, Giles Corey did end up dying from the experience. However, because he didn't plead, he wasn't convicted, so his property wasn't seized, and it actually was uh, still able to be inherited by his descendants, his children. Although he never offered a plea, according to legend, Giles, Corey, G Giles Corey's last words were to place a curse on the office of Sheriff of Essex County and Sheriff Corwin. Corwin himself died in 1696 at the age of 30. And many of those who have held the office of uh, Sheriff of Essex County have actually like suffered or died from blood complications or heart attacks like repeatedly. Uh, the curse is believed to have been lifted when the new when the office was moved out of Salem and to, into Middleton in 1991. However, there are still some who say you can still see Giles Corey's ghost walking through his graveyard before a tragedy is about to strike uh, in Salem. Uh, many claim to have witnessed his uh, ghost right before the tragic Great Fire of Salem in 1914.